Okay, so this video is going to deal with loading legacy 2D data into Patrol. So this is data that was collected in South Africa in the 1980s and we cannot reprocess it. Um, they scanned the tapes of the data that they had and so what we have are scanned copies and so we can just interpret the horizons on it. And so let me just show you my folder here. You can see I've got all these SEGWI files and you can see BV01 and BV at changes. So this was one of the survey areas. It's broken up into several different survey areas um, and the numbers change. So this over here, all of these number ones, oh, won't let me highlight, those are all one line broken up into different segments. Here's BV02, also again different segments. BV03 is only one of them and so forth. You can see it changes to KL, it's a different area. NWK, I think that's Northwestern Karoo, um, P, so it's all based around towns or areas. So SWK is also Southwestern Karoo, WK, Western Karoo. So these are the data. In these SEGWI files, there are no coordinates. And so how do I know that? How do I know what information is in here? So a great um, piece of software that's free and very uh, doesn't take much memory on your computer to run is this program here called SISE C S E I S E E. So if I click on it and I've already opened these files, so you can see on the left here are all these different SEGWI files, and then on the right hand side here, the first tab is the actual seismic data, but the settings oh, I can zoom in, I didn't know that. So you can't really see the data very well. Next one along here says trace headers. So this is some of the header information in the SEGWI file. So it's a bit weird if you've never dealt with seismic data before dealing with headers, but it's kind of instead of having all different separate files, they put a whole bunch of information about the data in the headers of this data. So it's all in one file in the SEGWI file. And we can look at it here. And so these, you can see one to four, I would say columns, but I'm sure these are bytes. So byte one to four will give you a certain amount of information. And so I think bytes, if I understand correctly, and I could be completely wrong, it's like so one to four, there can be up to four numbers in this column, and they would all represent these trace sequence number width. I don't even know if I can expand that. There we are. So these are all different bytes, headers that you could have. So if I click on this tick here, I can see all the different rows will show up on the screen. And with new seismic data, you'll probably have a lot of information here. But with the old seismic data, especially for this one that was digitized, there's really not much information here. So the only uh, column we actually have info is this SP1. It's supposed to be your source point or your shot point, and CDP is your common depth point. So this is kind of where the energy was going into the ground, so the explosions, I think they use dynamite in this case, and then CDP is kind of where they're recording. So you'll have to go read up about CDPs. So you can see if I take everything off, and I click just on those two, that's pretty much the info we've got. And so these are different points at which the um, shot was created and these are different recording points. So yeah, I'm not going to go into too much theory about that. Another column that's often well used, but you'll see is zero here, is 73 and 77. This is usually the, short, the source X and Y. And so here there should be numbers but we don't have any. So I just wanted to highlight that for you. You can also view this in Patrol. You'll see now it's actually a lot better, but if you don't want to waste the time opening up Patrol, SciC is a great piece of software to just check what's in your headers. So let's put that down. So I'm warning you now, there's no X and Y's in these data, and so I've actually got a world coordinate Karoo navigation file. I got this from the company sorry, it was already open. I got this from the company that um, that digitized the data. Sorry, I'm just going to delete this column so it doesn't confuse us. And so they put together this, they obviously digitized the maps. And so you can see there's not going to be very high accuracy data. This first column is the line number. You can see there's all the A's and then below is B's. Here is the shot point. So it goes from 1 to 25. It increases um, sequentially and there's no gaps that I can see, but that sometimes there might be. Um, and so this is the point at which the shots were, this is the X and this is the Y. You'll see now in Patrol, you can also have a column for your common depth points. Um, and it kind of, yeah, in Patrol we'll figure out how many of what, yeah, how they correlate to each other. But for us, we don't have that information, we've just got shot points X and Y. 
so this is here. Another piece of information that I got from the company is the coordinate system that those X and Y are in. So they chose to use this one here, Elba's Equal Area Conical South Africa. Um, or, and you'll see in patrol it's actually called Africa. So I'm not sure why they chose this coordinate system. I I think there are definitely pros that I read about a long time ago, so you can go read about it online. Nowadays, we definitely use UTM or we use things like LO coordinate system. Um, so I, maybe this is, yeah, I'm not sure why they used it. Um, but you can see on the right hand side here, you're not going to have to put it in, but it defines the coordinate system. It gives latitude of origin. There's a whole bunch of different numbers here to define it. I'm just going to warn you now, these numbers here are slightly different from the ones in patrol, but instead of defining a new coordinate system, I just use the ones in patrol, and it doesn't seem to have caused too much of a problem. Um, what it might cause problems for later is if we uh, like georeference a map, we'll just have to make sure the, the coordinate system we georeference the map in is the same as the Kingdom Suite coordinates, uh, sorry, the patrol coordinate system. Okay, so that's a lot of information to get you started. So that's just about the background data. So how do we load it into patrols? So I've opened up patrol over here and you can see in the home tab my resolution of stuff is a bit weird. I'm just going to pause and see if I can change my screen resolution. 